Today I'm making beef and cacotte. Now, cacotte is a casserole dish or a covered dish that's used to cook big pieces of meat. You can actually cook just about anything in cacotte, just means that you're cooking it in a covered pot. So today we're making beef and I've chosen a top sirloin roast for the job. It's three to four pounds, so it's gonna serve quite a few people, but top sirloin is just a beautiful cut. It's got a lot of marbling in it, big beefy flavor. And we don't need to worry about cooking it for hours and hours as we would a chuck roast. We're actually going to cook this to medium rare. So I'm gonna set this aside for just a moment and we're gonna prepare our other ingredients before we start to cook. Now, we're using two different types of mushrooms because we're making a beautiful mushroom sauce. And the first thing I wanna do is bring out my porcinis, these little dried porcini mushrooms. And I need a half an ounce of these, all right. Now dried mushrooms can be dusty, a little gritty, so I wanna be sure to drain these off. So I'll pour these into this fine mesh strainer. So I am going to go over to the sink and rinse them off. Now these are still dried, I need to reconstitute them. So I've got some boiling water. I'm gonna pour a cup into my measuring cup here. Add the mushrooms, just make sure they're submerged. So I'm gonna put this bowl on top just to trap the heat in there and let them steep for about five minutes. So I mentioned that's the first of the two mushrooms. Here's the second, cremini mushrooms. These are beautiful. And I need five ounces of cremini mushrooms. And now I do want to clean these off. I like to use a little pastry brush just to get any big clumps of dirt. So now for our cremini mushrooms, I'm gonna trim off just the bottom here. So we're gonna keep the stems attached, but just trim off the very bottom. All right, and then finally, we're gonna cut these into quarter inch slices. So for the smaller ones, I'll probably leave these whole and just cut through this way. Then once my finger gets a little close, I can go ahead and just cut this way. But for a larger cremini, I'm gonna go ahead and start by cutting it in half. All right, so that's it for the mushrooms. So next up, an onion. We're using one onion here. I'm gonna finely chop it, so just cutting it in half peeling it. Sometimes you have to get that next layer too. So what I like to do is cut it in half again. So that way I don't need to make any horizontal cuts. I'm just going vertical and then vertical after turning the onion and then right across. All right, any big pieces I'm just gonna chop. And then once again, the handy bench scraper. All right, same thing with my second half. All right, into the bowl. Now it wouldn't be a French dish without a little bit of garlic and we're using three cloves here, but we don't need to mince these. So instead, I'm just gonna use the side of my knife to smash them and then take that peel away. And now the herb, which really is the star of the show here, tarragon. Just pick a couple of sprigs, big ones for me, and those go right into the bowl. So now we can bring back our porcini mushrooms, which should be softened at this point. So I'll go ahead, put the bowl to the side, and we're gonna strain this because we also want to use all of that beautiful porcini liquid. I'm just gonna use the bottom of the cup to press and drain out that liquid. All right, we'll set this aside. We're gonna use that in a little bit. And the mushrooms, we're gonna finely chop and add those to the bowl with the rest of our vegetables. There we go. I bet you thought I wasn't gonna get to the beef, but I am right now. You don't need to do a lot to it. This is a beautiful top sirloin roast. A roast between three to four pounds will work for this recipe. I do need to do a little bit of trimming. There's a little piece of thick fat here that's not really gonna go away. So you don't need to go too crazy with your trimming, just a little bit. And one last thing to do to the roast before we move on, I'm just gonna tie it right in the center. And really this is key to ensuring that this beef cooks evenly. Let's give it a little squeeze. And you can see, as soon as I let go of this, it really releases. So one way that butchers will keep the meat intact as they're tying it, is they'll wrap it around twice. So watch, when I do this, it doesn't let go completely. Take off the excess, and I'm gonna clean up, and then we'll move on. All right, it's time to start cooking, and we've got our cocotte here, our Dutch oven. We're going to add two tablespoons of vegetable oil in there and I'll turn this to medium high heat. All right, we're gonna wait for that to get to the point where it starts to shimmer. But in the meantime, we can finish prepping our roast. 
You can see there's some surface moisture. I want to get rid of that with some paper towels, so just pat it dry because we want to start to develop a nice brown color on the outside. And now I'm going to salt and pepper both sides. All right, so that's good. We just have to wait for that oil to heat up. I'm starting to see the first wisps of smoke there, so I'm going to add in our roast. Wait for the sizzle. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna cook this and turn it so that it's browned on all sides, and that's gonna take anywhere between seven to 10 minutes. Let's check that first side. That is some beautiful brown color. I'm gonna continue browning this on all sides. Probably has another five to eight minutes left. All right, last little bit of browning. You can see gorgeous color all over that roast. So I'm gonna get it out of the pot at this point. I like to use two pairs of tongs if I need to. I'm gonna put this back on that plate and set it aside for just a moment. So now I'm gonna add a little bit more oil, about a tablespoon to the pot, and we're gonna let that start to shimmer, which it does almost instantly because the pot was so hot. So now I'm gonna add all of those beautiful vegetables and the tarragon and the mushrooms. All right, so let me toss this in the oil. Oh, the aroma as soon as all of this hit the pan. So I'm gonna let my vegetables sweat under the lid for about five minutes so that they start to release their liquid. All right, let's take a look at those vegetables. They're nice and soft. Oh, amazing, all right. So now I'm going to continue to cook this with the lid off at this point. So we're gonna let these go for about 10 minutes. I wanna keep an eye on it so that they don't get too brown. So in the meantime, we're going to add a quarter cup of dry white wine here. So I'm gonna add this white wine to our porcini liquid. One more ingredient, a little bit of cognac is gonna go in there, two tablespoons. This is going to add some beautiful warmth and depth to our sauce. All right, so two tablespoons goes in there. I'm gonna keep an eye on my vegetables and look for some nice browning. All right, so most of that moisture has been driven off by the heat of the pot, so it's time to add our next ingredient. We're using a tablespoon of tomato paste. It's just going to add a nice savory counter. And I'm gonna cook this for about 30 seconds just to get rid of any raw tomato flavor. We've developed some beautiful brown fond in the bottom of our pot, and we wanna pull all of that up to make the sauce. So that's where our porcini liquid and the white wine and the cognac comes into play. I'm gonna add that right now. And it's safe to add the cognac over the heat because it was mixed in with those other ingredients. So I'm gonna use my wooden spoon to scrape up all of those bits, and then we're gonna cook this and let it simmer until most of that liquid has evaporated. That's gonna take a good five minutes. I wish you could be in here because this smells outrageous. It just smells so perfect. All right, so most of that moisture has been driven off. I can see a trail when I scrape my spoon through the pot. Oh, but I do need to add the beef back to the pot at some point. All right, so I'm just gonna nestle it down there in the bottom, pour any juices in there. Oh, ho, 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 yeah. And now the beef is gonna give up a little bit of liquid as it cooks. And I wanna trap that liquid in there so it can really cook the beef. So I'm gonna put a piece of foil right on top. So we're gonna put this into a pretty low oven, 250 degrees. And we're gonna cook this until the internal temperature of the roast registers between 120 and 125. We want it to be medium rare. smells amazing. All right, so again, I'm looking for around 120 to 125, and we are hitting it. How about that? So I'm gonna get this out of the pot. Again, I, I like to use two pairs of tongs, and now we don't wanna carve it right away, so I'm gonna take that piece of foil and just tent it loosely, and we're gonna let this rest for a good 20 minutes. So we're putting this back over medium-high heat. We're going to add one and a half cups of chicken broth. Give that a good stir. And I'm gonna cook this and let it simmer for about two minutes just so that the flavors can meld. All right, so this has been simmering for just about two minutes. So that looks great. I'm gonna turn the heat off because now I need to go fishing for some tarragon. Remember those sprigs that I put in there earlier? We don't need those anymore. So now, again, this is off heat. We're gonna finish this with a little bit of butter. About a tablespoon, that goes in, and I'm gonna whisk that in just to finish the sauce. 
that is it. So I'm gonna put the lid right back on the pot just to keep it nice and warm while we wait for the rest. All right, I couldn't help myself. I told you I love tarragon. So this isn't part of the recipe, but I had so much on hand, I decided to chop a little extra for sprinkling on top. But now it's time to carve our roast. So it's rested for 20 minutes. So juicy. And you want pretty thick slices here, about a quarter inch thick, but you can see it still has some beautiful rosy pink color. Well, I can't wait. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate myself a couple of slices, don't mind if I do. I can't forget about the sauce. I mean, come on. Mushrooms galore, caramelized onion, and as promised, everything looks better with a little bit of green on it. Ah, the only thing better than smelling it is tasting it. So let me tuck in here. It is so tender. That sauce is unbeatable, earthy, a little warm from the cognac, and tarragon is definitely front and center. I love dishes like this. You have to do a little bit of work at the front, but once it goes in the oven, really, dinner's pretty much done. So to make this at home, remember these keys. Start off with a top sirloin roast and tie the roast to ensure even cooking. Build a sauce right in the pot and then let the beef rest before carving. So from America's Test Kitchen at home, beef and cocotte with mushroom sauce. C'est magnifique. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>